Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going over Windows emulation on Android with Exagear. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Exagear is a Windows emulator on Android. It used to be on the Google Play Store, but it's no longer there. As far as I know here, it was bought by Huawei and is really no longer in active development. However, the community is still trying to work on this thing and improve it. Now, the big problem with Exagear is that it's not open source. It's a closed source app and as a result, development from the community is extremely limited. On top of that, it's really important to understand what Exagear is and what it isn't. It's not an emulator that's going to allow you to play something like GTA 5 or even RPCS3. This is more or less meant for older PC games like Diablo 2, maybe the original Halo. Now, in addition to all of that, I would say Exagear is not necessarily an emulator that is for the faint of heart. There is a lot of trial and error in this, a lot of configuration, and not one setting is going to work for absolutely everything. You will be tinkering around with it quite a bit. On top of that, it's fairly fragmented. There's a bunch of different versions out there in a bunch of different locations. And since devices vary, it's not necessarily the easiest to get up and running with. Now, there are three places I recommend checking out for some solid information about Exegear. I'll leave all three links in the description below. The first place is a Russian forum. The second place is a Russian Discord, but they also have English channels. And the third place is English. It's Android Visual Novels, or AVN. Android Visual Novels specialize in visual novels, not necessarily gameplay, but they do have a very helpful tutorial. To get Exegear up and running, you need two main files, possibly even three. You need the APK, which is the main app. You need the .obb file, which is more or less the guts. And sometimes you need a DLL file, which has to deal with sound. Since Exegear is so fragmented, there's a bunch of different versions here. The Discord server has a bunch of different files that you can choose from. We have Wine 6.0, Wine 4.0, Wine 3.0. For the purposes of this video, I use two separate files. On the Russian Exegear Discord server, I did pick up Exegear SU Ludash TZ Game Pulse EN APK. The APK is in English here and it did work. A few of the other ones worked as well. I just found this one was one of the easier ones to use. And the second file I picked up was Wine 3.0 Turnip plus Zinc. China all mod v2 zip. Alternatively, you can head over to the AVN server, the Android Visual Novel server, and pick up a bundle that contains pretty much everything you need. There is a Wine 3.0 version, and there's also a Wine 6.0 version. If I scroll down just a little bit, uh, it is right there. And they also have dsound.dll if you're running into some issues with certain games. And again, just a reminder here, this emulator is not for the faint of heart. I mean, you're downloading random files off the internet. Use at your own risk here. If you don't know what you're doing, just don't do it. If you're not comfortable with this, just don't do it. So if you still want to proceed here and you're having questions about what files exactly you need, I do have a couple people in my Discord server who might be able to help. One is a beta tester on the Russian Exegear server, and the other one is a representative of AVN. Once everything's downloaded, the first thing to do here is extract the OBB file out of the zip file. The next step is to place that OBB file in the main file system on your phone. If you're on PC, it's a simple drag and drop. If you're doing this directly from your phone, depending on the file manager you're using, it should be under storage emulated zero. And you can see the OBB file right there. The next step is to manually install the Exegear APK. So so just open that up on your phone. The only permissions this app should ask for is access to your storage. Once that's done, feel free to boot up Exegear. We are almost done here. It will take a little bit of time for the first time it boots. If it doesn't boot, if it gives you an error, it means you've got an issue with your OBB file. It might be in the wrong location. It might be no good. You might have to get a different one. When it does boot up, you'll be greeted with this nice desktop screen that says empty. So click on the burger menu in the top left-hand corner. From here, click on manage containers. Once you're here, click on the plus icon in the top right-hand corner. This will create a new container. Next up, click on the three dots here on the container menu and then click on settings. By default, my language was set to Chinese, so I can switch that to English. My graphics was set at 16-bit, I can change that to 32-bit. 
And for controls, it's set to default. There are a bunch of different control schemes here that you can try out if you want. Here's a few examples of the control schemes you can choose from. You can see what games they are dedicated for as well. For example, one for Fallout and here's one for Diablo. Now, if for some reason you're running a game here and things aren't working quite right, you might have to tinker around with the screen size. To start out though, I don't recommend really changing it. Just leave it at default and see if you can get in Exegear in the first place. Once you're done there, click the back arrow, hit the burger menu, Menu again and then click run and this should boot up your windows instance if you've done everything correctly so far you should be greeted with this screen that lets you know what the default controls are one of the first steps a lot of people like to do is click on the start menu here and then install directx 9c 10 1 11 and that might help with a lot of different games in addition to that i'd recommend taking some time here to get used to the exegear environment and file system for me, the D drive contained my downloads folder, so the easy way for me to put my games on this was to just throw everything in the downloads folder and I can easily access it from Exegear. And the Z drive for me contained my entire Android file system. Now moving on here, and I want to emphasize again that you might have to tinker around with your settings quite a bit in order to get certain things to work. Some pieces of software might boot up without any issues, some might require a bit of tinkering, and some might just not work at all. It's not necessarily the smoothest process to get your favorite pieces of software up and running in Exegear. Now, depending on what version of Exegear you go with, because there are a bunch of different versions out there with a bunch of different options. The version I have here, if you hit start, go to prog tweak, you can access wine CFG for your wine configuration settings. You can also access your registry editor as well as your task manager, and all of these settings might help out things quite a bit. Unfortunately, I can't be too specific here because each game might behave a little bit differently, and one setting might not work on another one. To show you a game in action on Exegear, I've got Capcom vs. SNK2 DX 2021. It is a specialized copy of Mugen or Mugen, depending on how you want to say it. The entire game is contained within a folder here. All you have to do is just click on the exe file and boot it up. And here is proof that the crazy version of Capcom vs. SNK2 is up and running. Yes, we're running Mugen on Android. Surprisingly enough, the game does run fairly decently. There are some slowdowns here and there, but overall it's entirely playable, provided you can control it. Playing a fighting game on this probably wasn't wasn't the best idea. I tried a few different touchscreen control layouts. I wasn't happy with any of them. Then I tried a Bluetooth controller and I paired it in keyboard mode. And I could control things a little bit, but it was far less than ideal. At the end of the day here, Exegear is a neat emulator to use. It's not the easiest nor smoothest emulator out there, but at the same time, it's pretty versatile for what it is. And it's really impressive at what the community has been able to accomplish so far, given the fact that this is closed source. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about Exegear in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.